Okay, Daddy, your brain. <coughs> so, sir, I am still often asked: Is your party supporting the GST? Constitutional amendment. You are asking me. Come on, no, you. sir. I am asked this question, uh -huh. and I am sad actually that we asked this question because you should put that question actually to the government and the principal opposition party because we often get confused when they are supporting, when they are not supporting because what their stand is depends on where they sit. Whereas there are many of us here in the middle who have been the most consistent on this, like my party, the Trinamool Congress. In our 2009, 2011, 2014, and 2016 manifestos, we have promised GST. We promised it as an idea and also as an implementation. But we'll come to that. But when people get up here, especially when they're such articulate lawyers, and uh, I'm feeling a little like a teenager maybe in their presence, but I'm going to talk about the details of the bill. The lawyer I had a, can argue both sides. I had a great that. experience being a great a great experience being on the select committee, and we'll discuss the bill in great detail. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of the bill, sir, there is the politics of the bill. And sometimes when it's convenience, convenient, the government or the principal opposition don't want to discuss the politics of the bill. Because if we ask someone what is GST, they'll probably tell you it's goods and services tax. We should treat but, above politics. But, that is our but, but GST could also be interpreted as Girgit, Samjhota tax. Because the way these two people have behaved, that's the parliamentary, sir. The way these two people have behaved, it's been a 10 years of ping pong. Olympics are coming, they have won the ping pong medal, sir. No, no, let me tell you. Girigit is only unparliamentary. I checked this. When you call an MP a Girigit, I'm referring to the tax, not an MP. Thank you. Okay. Now let me tell you about this ping pong. Please don't disturb me. Let me tell you about this ping pong match. Ping pong match between this side and this side. Sir, the ping pong match, you listen to this. Election manifesto of 2009, page 6, point, page 19.6. CST, I'll tell you later, Nada, Bulbo, Bulbo. CST will be abolished and GST will be rationalized between 12% and 4%. Whose manifesto? BJP manifesto. They haven't taken it off. It's still on the site. 12 to 14 percent. My senior learned friend, now the leader of the house, we won't be fairly treated. We will cut off our own hands, our constitutional authority, and hand over all fiscal powers to the center. Who said this? The honorable leader of the house, Mr. Jetley. Mr. Jetley has said many things about FDI and retail also when he was leader of the opposition. But as I said, where, what, where they sit depends on what stand they take, sir. And they are such great lawyers, you give them any brief, they'll twist it to meet that only, with all respect. Sir, there's a very interesting quote I found from 2011. Sir, this is said, the new constitution amendment draft proposed by the government of India is retrograde. It's completely against fiscal federalism. 2011. Saurabh Patel, Finance Minister of Gujarat in 2011. I've forgotten who the Prime Minister of Guj uh, the Chief Minister of Gujarat was in 2011. But this was said, sir. And the now Honorable Prime Minister said in February 2014, without proper IT and infrastructure, GST is impossible to implement. Sir, this politics of GST is very, very important. Because for two years, two houses were stalled by two abbreviations, by the BJP. One was GST and the other one was FDI. So, sir, memory is very, very short. Sir, we are done with the BJP. Now we get this side. <laughs> Mr. Chidambaram used a very nice one. GST, he said, was good sense triumphs. Nice one, sir. But our interpretation or your interpretation when you came to the select committee with your colleagues is not good sense triumphs. It's go slow tactics. 
This is exactly what your colleagues did in the select committee. And this is all of us here in the middle who were not the Congress or the BJP. That is the SP, the BSP, the BJD, the DMK, the NCP, the CPI. All of the us saw the go slow tactics, but unfortunately, thank you, sir. Okay. The select committee is not on prime time television. So these the parliamentary debates are. But this is the situation of the select committee. And Mr. Chidambaram today made the point about his party is for the idea of GST. Of course, we are also for the idea. But only having an idea is no good. We are for the implementation of GST. And Mr. Chidambaram made a nice point about the triangle. And the triangle has to be decided between the finance minister, the states, and the people. Yes, and I want to tell the Congress party, we also believe that that's where you have to find the solution. But the difference between us and the Congress, we believe the bottom of that triangle is the people. All of us are on the same page on this. 18% cannot go into that constitutional amendment. You spent every minute of the select committee stopping it. The, the, the empowered committee of finance ministers with 21, 22 are unanimous that you cannot have the 18% either in the constitutional amendment or in the GST bill. But the language I was hearing today is a language of hold on, we let you play the first innings. When it comes to the second innings, we'll try and block you. I think if the tone is conciliatory, and the tone ought to be conciliatory, this parliament must debate, must deliberate, must legislate. Good. We also need to implement. We must implement. Sir, now let's come to the role of this select committee. And I said, if we shoot right, we will shoot this side also. This Rajya Sabha, thank heavens for the Rajya Sabha, because if there was no Rajya Sabha, there would have been no select committee, and then you would have not got the wisdom of the Rajya Sabha. But let me quote you, sir. Let me quote to you on April 2016, very recently, sir. Quote, to what extent is the upper house going to be used to block economic decision making? In Australia, in UK, and Italy, the debate is on. Because ultimately, the weight of a directly elected house will always have to be maintained. Said by the leader of the house, Mr. Arun Jetli, sir, if you are being in a conciliatory mood, this is not the, what the leader of the house could have said, because otherwise we'd use the Lok Sabha and bulldoze legislation. It came to the Rajya Sabha. There were points made. Everyone had uh, points to make. And based on these points, sir, there was a lot of change to the, to the legislation. Yes, there was the exempted category on petroleum crude. States had a problem with that. And we appreciate that that was taken care of. So was tobacco products. So was interstate transactions. So was the dispute resolution mechanism. And we did not want a separate authority. So all that is fine. And we appreciate that the government reached out to the states, worked with the states, worked with the finance ministers. Sir, but on the ground, sir, I want to flag one issue on implementation, sir. On CST, which we were told, and I'm giving you one example because it's my state. So I'm trying to flag how difficult it is to implement this. Sir, on CST, my state was owed 6,500 crores, sir. Compensation remaining to be paid. I must use this opportunity to flag this, sir, and please, not only my state, Orissa has about 3,000 crores. Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Assam, Telangana, all have a lot of outstanding, sir, on this CST. Sir, on Clause 19, we did make the point, all the states, that the word shall, may, shall be, the word shall will become may, and the compensation will be taken care of. The word up to was dropped, and there is for five years. We appreciate that, sir. The word full compensation was not used in the legislation, sir. We, I would request the finance minister to please clarify that on the floor of this house, sir. Sir, I want to refer to one point where you say the Constitution 172nd Amendment Bill as reported by a select committee of the Rajya Sabha. Here, sir, in Clause 10, if you look at Clause 10, it is not what was unanimously recommended by the select committee. Clause 10. I'll read the Clause 10, which was the select committee recommendation, sir. Quote, 
the GST levied and collected by the Government of India, except the tax apportioned with the states under Clause 1 of Article 169A, shall be distributed between the Union and the states in the manner provided in Clause 2. Sir, this is not there in the, uh, in the bill. Sir, what is the problem now? Yes, sir. Please. The words, except the tax apportioned with the states under Clause 1 of Article 269A, so monies which have been kept by the center right. were not intended to go by devolution. This was in the select committee's recommendation, a drafting error which would have deprived the states of certain revenue. So we have given more revenue to the states by correcting that error. Right, sir. I have a, okay. I, I, will, uh, I will respond to that, sir. Yeah, I will. Sir, I will. Now which comes to, sir, we are not posturing, we are not posturing because we really believe that after this constitutional amendment uh, after this uh, bill is passed today, it will go to the states and it will come back. But I want to flag, I want to flag an uh, issue, sir, which is, again, I don't speak, I think, on behalf of myself and my party, but across the empowered committee, sir, the, prop, the, the, the cap, the small business cap of below 1.5 crore will be handled by the states. And once that figure goes above 1.5 crores, then it will be done jointly between the center and the state. Sir, this is very, very crucial because we don't want to come into November and then think that we're going to implement in April 2017. From what I'm hearing today, I would like to, I need this clarification. Otherwise, I'm very scared when I hear April 1, 2017, because that is April Fool's Day. And this ping pong match cannot continue any longer. We need to implement this on April 1, 2017. And that's why I'm being specific, sir. Sir, there are other issues. There are other issues on, <clears throat> on the implementation, sir. And as much as we legislate and look ahead, sir, the issues which are of concern, and this is where through you, sir, I want to flag these issues for the finance minister. One of the issues is the, and you, these are not legislative issues, but in implementation, sir, the GST registration. Because people will be registering not once, not twice, but three times in a state. Sir, so GST compliance. Compliance also has to be, cannot be around 4%, 5%. Sir, there is the, also the issue of, there's an ambiguity, and I don't want to get very technical in the discussion, ambiguity of supply and value of taxable supply. I think in the implementation, sir, we need to really seriously look at this. Sir, I would be failing in my duty if I did not put on record here the great job done by the empowered committee of finance ministers across the state and it was our pleasure and privilege that my colleague, Dr. Amit Mitra, the Honorable Finance Minister of uh, Bengal, in 150 days, he led the team. And I think there was a very broad consensus across the states and the empowered committees did what they do. Sir, in conclusion, I was wondering whether the politics of the GST will actually continue into November or this is otherwise from a ping pong match, this will become like a cricket match where you will win the first innings and then the second innings in November will stop because of rain or something else. Sir, so I did a little bit of research to assure the BJP first that after GST is passed in one or two years, there are four or five countries who have held elections, where elections have been held. This will be of interest to you. Australia, New Zealand, Russia, Argentina, and Indonesia. Canada. And in all those places, Canada. the elections were won. OK, that's the good news. Now the bad news. There are also some countries where after GST was implemented, the elections were lost. And I want to perk up, perk you this side up. All. Brazil, UK, Germany, South Africa. So as you see, it's 50. Uh, one second, one second, one second. It's it's a 50-50 toss-up. So my appeal, my appeal to the BJP and the Congress, since we're all sitting in the middle, is don't let those election results bother you because they could go either way, but bring in this GST. Sir, I want to end with a little story. Sir, there was a boy in class 8, class 10, at Xavier School in Delhi. Little known Delhi school compared to the fancy Delhi schools. Sir, he was in class 10, and he was born round about the time the GST concept was first introduced. 
Just born at that. He was in class 10 in 2005. He was born before that. Today, the boy who was in class 10 is now winning us a, a, a great victory in the West Indies, Virat Kohli. And there are millions of young Virat Kohlis across the country who are looking at us today. And for their sakes, and for the sakes of India tomorrow, we need to deliberate, we need to debate, we need to legislate, and we need to implement this GST. The faster we do it, the better. Yes, Thank with, you, sir. With that note, we can end. Good.